Perfect. I'm going to start by saying Happy Black History Month. And I am, yes. <laughs> and I'm so excited that we are here together to celebrate a woman whose legacy is at the heart of that history this month and every other month, right? So, Miss Mary Frances Early has consistently broken down barriers and expanded the possibilities that exist for all of us who have come after her. Her dedication to equality for black students of all ages has been especially meaningful for my organization, Graduate and Professional Scholars, also known as GAPS. To recognize that import, in 1999, GAPS members Tracy Ford and Valerie White proposed that Ms. Early serve as a featured speech speaker for our spring lecture. Following her keynote address on April 18, 2000, GAPS renamed the annual spring lecture in her honor. Each year since then, with the support of the Graduate School, the Mary Frances Early College of Education, and the Office of Institutional Diversity, this lecture has grown. Um, and it's demonstrated the progress that has been made while also recognizing that there is still more to be done to fully realize Ms. Early's vision. It is our hope that with each lecture, and honestly each day that we live being aware of her legacy, we move closer to that vision. With that being said, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to the 24th Annual Mary Frances Early Lecture. It is also my pleasure to introduce the 22nd President of the University of Georgia, Jerry W. Moorhead. President Moorhead is a 1980 graduate of the UGA School of Law and has held a faculty appointment in UGA's Terry College of Business since 1986. He has served UGA in key administrative roles throughout his career and has served as president of the university since 2013. President Moorhead is past president of the Southeastern Conference, chair of the NCAA Division I Board of Directors, and a member of the NCAA Board of Governors. He also serves as a member of the National Football Foundation Board of Trustees and is co-chair of the University Leadership Forum, a national initiative led by the Council on Competitiveness. Please join me in welcoming President Moore. Well, thank you so much and good afternoon, everyone. This is a very, very special occasion as we celebrate the Mary Frances Early Lecture here at the University of Georgia and celebrate the 24th time that this lecture has been given. 23 of those occasions Miss Early was able to be here and be a part of this important event and we are so glad that you are with us today. As mentioned a moment ago, uh, this lecture came about because of our graduate students and I want to congratulate them on the important decision that was made to create this lecture series and recognize what a role you play in the ultimate history surrounding the celebration of Mary Frances Early. As all of you know, uh, in February of 2020, just prior to the pandemic, we were able to celebrate the naming of the Mary Frances Early College of Education. And that event probably was the only event in 2020 that all of us remember <laughs> uh, But it was an event that really made a huge difference in a positive way for the University of Georgia. And if you haven't been to the College of Education and seen the exhibit celebrating the incredible legacy of Mary Frances Early. I encourage you, uh, after this lecture is over today, uh, to walk over and see uh, the tribute that is paid to this trailblazer. Miss Early, I want to thank you for all that you continue to do for the University of Georgia. 
And in particular, I want to thank you for your courage, for your leadership, for your loyalty, and for your unwavering <laughs> friendship and support. It means so much to each and every one of us that's gathered here today. Please join me in thanking you so much. Ms. Early, your legacy, along with Charlene Hunter and Hamilton Holmes, in desegregating this institution has had a lasting impact. And it has allowed so many students to follow in your footsteps. And this institution has been forever changed because of your legacy. I'd also like to thank our speaker today, Yvette Daniels. Uh, she's no stranger to the University of Georgia. She served as the 77th president of the UGA Alumni Association. She was the first black female president Woo! of the UGA Alumni Association. And she is a distinguished alumna of UGA, has done so many things in her career to bring great respect and honor back to the University of Georgia. She's a trailblazer in her own right, and so it seems so appropriate that she would be giving this lecture today. And I also think that we should all uh, celebrate uh, just a slightly belated birthday that she celebrated a couple of days ago. We won't sing happy birthday, but happy birthday to you as well. Happy birthday. We look forward to uh, her remarks to this wonderful occasion. Thank you all for being here uh, for what I think is going to be an absolutely grand afternoon. Thanks. I have the pleasure of introducing Ms. Yvette Daniels. Ms. Yvette K. Daniels currently serves as the Director of University Relations in the Division of Workforce Management for the Georgia Department of Public Health, with responsibility for employee engagement, the applied learning program, and establishing effective college and university relationships through the promotion of public health programs at both the state and local level. Previously, she served as the Director of Health Promotion for the Georgia Department of Public Health, where she was responsible for five programs, including maternal and child health, women, infants, and children, health promotion and disease prevention, the volunteer health care program, and the Office of Health Equity. During her 25 years in state government, Ms. Daniels has also served as Division Attorney and Legislative Director. Before joining, before joining um, the Department of Public Health, Ms. Daniels was an assistant state attorney with the state attorney's office in Jacksonville, Florida. As an assistant state attorney, Ms. Daniels was assigned to the sexual assault unit with responsibility for prosecuting sex offenses against children and women. While in Jacksonville, she also was a member of the Junior League of Jacksonville. She earned a bachelor's degree in political science here from the University of Georgia, as well as a Juris Doctorate from the University of Georgia in 1989. She is a leadership Georgia graduate and serves on the executive committee for the Morehouse School of Medicine's Prevention Research Center Community Coalition Board. She is a past president of the Stone Mountain chapter of Jack and Jill of America Incorporated. Ms. Daniels also, as Mr. Morehead mentioned, completed her term as the 77th president of the UGA Alumni Association in summer 2023. Again, we will celebrate that she was the first black woman president of the organization. She currently serves as a trustee for the UGA Foundation Board and is a member of the UGA Board of Visitors for the School of Public and International Affairs. Please join me in extending a warm welcome to Ms. Yvette Davis. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, we can do that. It's a beautiful day. It's the beginning of Black History Month. We're celebrating a woman who I I give great honor to. 
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That is what I am talking about. <laughs> Thank you all for being here today for the lecture, the 25th lecture, honoring Mary Frances Early. President Moorhead, thank you for your support of me personally and my role as a volunteer for this great university, for all that you do for our students, faculty, to make sure that we are tops in academics and in athletics. Without you, a lot of this would not be possible, so thank you. <laughs> Vice Provost and Dean of the Graduate School, Ron Walcott, thank you for bringing my name up for consideration as a speaker this year. I really appreciate it and I'm very honored. This is actually one of the greatest accomplishments of my life to be here honoring Mary Frances Rowe. To GAPS, the graduate professional scholars and the folks that brought it here to us today, to President Shannara Andrews Vickers and Vice President Brittany Brianna Spivey, thank you. I had so much fun last night at the dinner talking to students and giving a few assignments, even though I'm not a teacher. <laughs> to Dean Spangler and the Mary Frances Early College of Education, thank you for all that you do to make sure that our students get the best. Thank you for all you do to make sure Ms. Early is always recognized for her accomplishments and for all that she does for this greater community that we live in. To my sisters of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, thank you for being here. Anyone else from the D9, I have to recognize us in Black History Month. And I see my AKA sisters over here as well. <laughs> to my husband, Fred Daniels, for always supporting me in all of my endeavors and embracing the Bulldog Nation. <laughs> For those who don't know, he's a UVA grad, not a UGA grad. <laughs> However, he does have the best gear in this room. <laughs> to my children, Kenzie and Casey, I love you both. Thank you for always being here. Thank you for understanding when I had commitments with UGA. Oftentimes, my children would call or FaceTime me, and I would just turn my camera around and say, I'm at a UGA event. I'll have to call you later. <laughs> to my sister and my best friend for always being my cheerleader and being here with me today to celebrate. To my mentor, Don Bennett Alexander, who mentored me from the beginning of my law school career. My mentor and my encourager. And last but certainly and most important, Mary Frances Earl for being my mentor friend, encourager, and for giving your blessing when you heard that I would be this year's speaker. <laughs> it is a great honor to share this special day with you. So I guess you're all wondering how we met. Most of you probably assume that we met here at UGA, right? That'd be a, a reasonable assumption. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> in fact, we did not meet at the University of Georgia. In fact, we met at the hair salon. <laughs> yes, at the hair salon. Our stylist at the time, her name was Lisa, introduced us because she knew we both went to Georgia. And from there, our friendship blossomed. We talked whenever we had appointments on the same day, and now that I knew who she was, whenever I was in Athens for any event and she was there, I would make a beeline to her to connect and to speak and to talk. So naturally, our relationship started. Talking about UGA, talking about how to help students get into UGA, talking about what students needed to do to be successful at UGA. I knew Mary Frances Early was a very special lady from that very first appointment at the hair salon. Our hairstylist took such care with her. She, she would tell me at my appointment, I'm going to leave for a few minutes, I need to go pick someone up, and I'll be back. And she would go and get her, she would bring her to the appointment. 
She was just so loving and so caring, and I knew that this is somebody special, and that I needed to make every effort that I could to get to know her. So, preparing for the lecture today, I, I really spent a lot of time thinking, reflecting, uh, and it dawned on me that Mary Frances Early and my family actually have several connections that make this lecture today and my opportunity to share with you very special. Of course, now you know we both have the same hairstylist. We do care about how we <laughs> We both grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, attending schools in the Atlanta public school system. Mary Frances Early attended Turner McNeil High School as the last high school that she was a part of. My mother, Eva T. Kinsey, taught at Turner McNeil High School for 26 years. My mother, of course, was an educator in political science. Unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but history would have it, she came a few years after Hamilton Holmes, Charlene Hunter, and Mary Frances Early had graduated. But I think it's such a coincidence that we have those connecting pieces. Mary Frances Early, in case you didn't know, was the music librarian when she, taught, when she was at Clark College, now Clark Atlanta University. My mother was a librarian after retiring from her teaching career in Atlanta, Fulton County. I worked in the law library at the University of Georgia my whole three years in law school. The connections, you just never know where they're gonna turn up. Mary Frances Early and my mother also had one really special thing in common, a deep commitment to their students, a deep commitment for their success, not just in school, but beyond. I too have a commitment to students. I do a lot with students through my work at the Department of Public Health, and certainly quite a bit of, of that happens here at the University of Georgia. And my children would say to you, no matter where I go, if I meet someone in college, high school, or in their career, I am going to take time to learn about them, their journey, and I'm going to give them some advice too. <laughs> so I thought what I would talk about today is I want you all to, I'm sorry, what I want you all to first think about, just for a moment, two words, quiet trailblazer. Just let that sit with you for just a moment. I found several definitions of trailblazer. An innovator, a pioneer, one that blazes a trail to guide others, a person who's the first to do something. And then I decided to dig a little deeper. What does the dictionary say about quiet? And the word that came out to me of the definition, free from noise or uproar. And when I thought about that word, what I want you to picture in your mind is when you take a pebble and you skirt it across a body of water and it skips and it ripples and it gets bigger and bigger. There's an impact, but there may not be a lot of uproar about the impact. And when I think about those two terms together, that really reminds me of Mary Frances Early and her journey. So keep those two words in mind. So we know that Mary Frances Early is a quiet trailblazer. And you may wonder, what does that mean? How does it happen? Well, I would say to you, that Mary Frances Early has given us a roadmap. And I want you to think about that as we delve into this conversation. I want you to think about what does it take to be a quiet trailblazer. Everyone in the audience knows Mary Frances Early integrated the University of Georgia in 1961 as a graduate student pursuing a master's in music education. We also know that she had a turbulent time on our campus. She was the only black student on the campus. Charlene Hunter and Hamilton Holmes had gone home for the summer. So she was on campus all alone. No friends, no one to talk to. 
We also know from the history, she was shunned, she was ignored. She's mentioned even today in class, if she sat down on the row that she's sitting in today, everyone else got up and moved. Think about that for a moment. In the cafeteria, as she would walk in, on one occasion specifically, the students started throwing lemon slices at her. She almost decided never to come back. But a professor that she reached out to said, no, you must go back. You must not let them do this. This is what they want. So actually, she went back. And she ate almost all of her meals alone in the cafeteria. And despite all of that, and yet, she still thrived. Despite all of that, and yet, she still succeeded. And despite all of that, she still did well in her classes. In fact, she made mostly A's. She was an excellent student. How is that possible when you're so isolated? How is that possible when no one else talks to you day after day? In a field of study, music, music is engagement. Think about that for a moment. Remember, it's 1961. There is no social media. There are no computers. There are no cell phones. There are, not, there are no phones in the room in the dorm rooms. There's one phone probably with an administrator of, the, of that dorm. It's all about human contact and human interaction. Well, I'll tell you that Mary Frances' early roadmap shows that she was ready for the challenge. You wonder, how did she accomplish that? It actually started growing up in Atlanta, Georgia, in the 50s and 60s, experiencing life in the segregated South. Then there were all these positives that really helped her prepare for what she would soon find out. She had a joy for learning, and she took every opportunity to learn and grow through her schooling, straight through graduate studies. She knew education would take her for wherever she wanted to go. She got that joy from her parents early on. She was also really good at taking chances. Mary Frances Early knew how to step outside her comfort zone. You hear us talk about that a lot, so I say to the students, keep that thought in your mind. Think outside your comfort zone. Be okay being uncomfortable. Take advantage of opportunities that may not come your way. She took opportunities to travel. She was 17 in her high school graduation. Guess what? She traveled to New York City by herself in a train. Remember, we're still in a segregated part of the it's still Georgia, it's still New York. She took a chance. She didn't have to do that. Nobody encouraged her to do that. She took a lot of initiative in encouraging herself to be better. She also knew how to take advice from others. She knew how to step outside the comfort zone. All of this work prepared her for the moment when she decided that she would come to the University of Georgia. Her quiet determination it continued despite attempts to discourage her, and there were none. So I share some of this with you all to say, no excuses. If she can accomplish what she accomplished, living in that world with no, with no one really supporting her, you all can do so much. There's no excuse. Now, not to say she didn't have bumps in the road, not to say it was easy, it was not. What she wanted to do in her journey was not always encouraged by others. It was not always supported. And many times she knew by seeking out that opportunity, by getting outside her comfort zone, she was going to be the only one. And she still did it. I want you to be encouraged by this. Not afraid of it, not sad about it. Because she has no regrets. She says she'd do it all again because she knows how important it is. So I say that to you to encourage you. You should be encouraged by this roadmap that she has created. I'll tell you a couple little stories. 
she, she saw a dis discouragement in a couple places along the way that got her ready. So Mary Frances early can't do anything easy. She wants to do it hard. She wants to do everything. And when she was in college, she wanted to lead the band and the chorus. <laughs> and she learned how to do both beautifully. But a certain professor said, well, you know, women should only do the chorus. Men should lead the band. And she was like, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> and she ended up doing both. Quiet determination. She didn't push back. She did share her opinion. But at the end of the day, in her career, she did both. And those students still love her today. She also learned a lot about standing up for yourself in her career, standing up for students, doing the right thing for students when they needed it, even if she thought the consequence might be negative for her, because she knew how important it was for the students to have the right decision at the right time. Now, you may not know this, but despite all the negative things that were happening on campus, she did have support during that time. Well, not a lot of support, but there was support that happened on campus. There were faculty that reached out and were, were supportive of her. There were ministers here on campus who went with her to the cafeteria after she was treated poorly so that she would have a good experience. So she did have support. She also had guidance, of course, from her mother, from her community in Atlanta, and from the Athens community, because they knew what she was going through. We all know, also know that Hamilton Home stayed with a family in the Athens community. So she had support. And even with all that was going on, being isolated, being alone, not really having any friends. Remember, she's a graduate student, so she's 24, 25. Most of the students on campus are 19, 18, 19, 20. I'm sharing this with you again. So you know what support looks like. So you know what it looks like and you recognize it. And once you recognize that people are trying to support you, accept the support. Everyone on this campus wants our students to be successful. And so support might look different. It might be a conversation. It might be a nudge. It might be just one little quick word to you. Accept and recognize support when you see it it will take you far. This is what quiet determination looks like, taking advantage of all those opportunities. Before there was experiential learning, President Moorhead, Mary Frances Early was already doing it, taking a trip to New York, being a camp counselor, the only person of color at a music camp in the woods. We're from the city. <laughs> Stepping outside of her comfort zone, to learn how to help others. Being asked, now she, she, she is very accomplished. She plays the piano, she plays the clarinet. But in this camp, they said, we're gonna need you to play the bugle. <laughs> and do the morning reverie every morning. And guess what? She did that. <laughs> she took it, and you know why she was able to take advantage of that? Is because when she was in school and there was opportunities to learn other instruments, she learned other instruments. She took advantage of the resources. Before we had computers, you can go look for an internship, you can go to Handshake, you can Google wherever you want to go. She found her first experience in Seventeen Magazine. Reading, joy of learning, applied. They didn't know she was going to be a black woman until she got there. <laughs> Taking advantage of resources. So she spent a lot of time seeking out opportunities, funny, Story. I don't think she knows I don't know this. That was in her, in her book. She wanted to be a well-rounded student for her college application, so she decided she would try sports. She played basketball. She said she wasn't very good at it. <laughs> but she thought she needed to have that on her application. <laughs> so, didn't feel so good. She had to take a step away from it, but she came back, tried again in tennis, and was quite successful. She understood the assignment. She knew what would have to happen to go to the best school, to get a scholarship. She took advantage of the resources that were there with her. 
Before there were 800 clubs to join like you have here at the University of Georgia, even in her graduate program, when an opportunity came about to sing out choir over the summer, she did that too. She used the resources. So do your best. Push yourself a little bit, it's okay. We know it's hard. We know, we know we're at the premier university in the country. And that you're here because you're special. You're here because you can get the job done. She would want you, I know she wants you to do your best to get the job done. And to take the time to have some joy in the learning and the process. So a little bit about me, you heard about me a little bit. I'm a native Georgian. My parents are from, uh, my mother's from Waynesboro, Georgia. My father's from Warrington, Georgia. I attended Frederick Douglass High School. And um, when it was time for college, my mother wanted me to go to Spelman. She was a Spelman grad. My aunt was a Spelman grad. My godmother was a Spelman grad. The application for Spelman sat on my dresser from the time applications opened. And I didn't want to go. Not because I don't think Spelman is a fine college, but I was from Atlanta. And I really wanted to see something different. I wanted to know what it was like in the real world. I wanted to know what it was like to not be in a community that was very supportive and mostly black like me. So I chose the University of Georgia because I thought I could learn a lot here, and I did. So I did undergrad here, I did law school here, proud double dog. And my most vivid memory, and I came from a pretty big school. My high school class had over 400 grads. That first football game made me think I went to a small, <laughs> tiny little school. <laughs> I can remember very vividly a sea of red and black, and not just t-shirt red and black, fancy red and black. Back in the day, the old days, Everyone was so dressed up. I can remember men had blazers with bulldogs on them. Women wore poodle skirts with each other. I was like, wow, this is fancy. And uh, I loved every minute of it because I'm a little fancy. <laughs> My experiences here were mostly positive. I knew from time to time that people might not have liked me because of the color of my skin, but that was not a deterrent. As I told you, my mother, Eva Thomas Kinsey, uh, was our biggest cheerleader and my greatest motivator to this day. I feel like she's here with me today. Uh, she died in 2019. And uh, she always poured into us a strong sense of self, a strong sense of you are amazing in anything you do and you can do anything you want it to do. And so that really kept me in a positive space here. And I find that in life, and I'll say to our students that are in the audience, don't worry about what everybody else says about you. Run your own race. Your race is not against anyone else but you. Your race to be excellent is your race against yourself, despite what anyone says to you or does to you. And if you keep that as your focus, much like Mary Frances earlier, you will find success. So, I graduated from law school took a job as an assistant state attorney and moved to Florida. And there were some times I had to learn about obstacles. Uh, I wasn't always treated nicely. I can remember specifically being uh, asked by a police officer, here lady, can you go copy this in the prosecutor's office? And I was like, no, I cannot do that for you. I am not the secretary, I am the lawyer. And it taught me some lessons about how you interact with other people and how you have to make people know in a nice way, quiet way, what your role is. So, story seems pretty smooth sailing. I came from Atlanta, I had a great time in Atlanta, I went to college, got a great job, but there were obstacles. I know what it's like to be the only one in the room that looks like you. I know what it's like to be the only woman in the room that's black. I know what it's like to go to something and there's no one else to talk to and I gotta figure out how to be social. I know what it's like to be overlooked because you're different. I know what it's like for someone to take your work and take credit. I know what it's like because I was the first black woman on my executive team when my division became a department. I was the first black woman to be a lobbyist for my division. 
in my early career in state government. And you all know I was the first black woman to lead the UGA Alumni Association Board of Directors. Now, when I was doing any of those things, did I think I was a trailblazer? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I just knew I was trying to run my best race to do my best work and hopefully help some people along the way. That's all I could think of at the time. I knew I could make a difference if given that chance. What I continue to learn, and I hope each of you will take with you today, no matter where you are in your life, follow the roadmap that Mary Frances Early has set for us as the quiet trailblazer. Take the time, make yourself open to new opportunities. It could be in a new place, moving away. It could be traveling. It could be sitting next to somebody else different in your class that doesn't look like you and starting a conversation. I want you to get real comfortable being uncomfortable. If you're not uncomfortable here, you're not growing. That means you're not doing anything but going to class and coming back to your room. And maybe stopping off at Bolton with a food stamp. <laughs> so I want you to think about that. I want you to learn to lead, lean into leadership opportunities. Mary Frances early took the opportunity not only to attend Clark Atlanta University, she pledged a sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha. She was also a leader in Alpha Kappa Alpha. Also, while still being the musician, the music librarian in her program, and, and taking not only her major classes, but classes for two minors, she was busy. But she found the time to lean into leadership. One thing she said she wished she had done more of, and I hope you'll consider this, document your story early. Document your story early. I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> Write down and reflect about what you're experiencing. Because as time slips away, you'll forget. I don't know about you, but during COVID, now it seems like a flash. But there were so many things that happened. There were, there were lots of negatives, but there were some positives too. And so I encourage you, as you're in your, in your journey of school, as you're in your journey in your career, document what you're experiencing, because you're going to want to reflect back on that in the future. Build relationships. I talk about that a lot um, to students. But early on, I want you to think about getting to know other people. People that help people that they know. If they don't know you, they can't help you. And real friendships. I'm not talking about passing out cards. I don't even know the business card. I have a staff. But I do know how important it is to get to know people and make friends that don't look like you. And she talks about that constantly. Having all kinds of friends, being in diverse groups, having diverse relationships. That starts with you sitting next to somebody different. That starts with you talking to somebody that doesn't look like you, having coffee, finding the commonalities. At the end of the day, we're more alike than we are different. At the end of the day, we all pretty much want the same thing. We want a good life. We want family and friends we care about. We want to grow. But you have to do something too. You can't expect it all to be on the other person. You personally have to make that sacrifice to feel a little bit uncomfortable and go up to talk to someone you don't know. President Moorhead could probably tell you the first time I met him, I was so nervous. But I was determined I was going to get to know him better, and I am so thankful that I did that. Because it's made my life so much richer. Again, no excuses. Do your best at every opportunity. That quiet determination that I keep talking about, it still influences me every single time I have a conversation with Mary Frances Early. And, I, and I've been around her a lot. I, I have so many little recordings on my phone, on my iPad, where I just, when she starts talking, I hit record. Because I want to go back to those thoughts. I want to go back and hear what she says when I'm not having a great day when I'm feeling like I'm not doing my best, when I feel like the world is again, go through all of that, I can't. And to know I did everything in my power to make the world better, 
to get more people of color to want to come to this university and to experience what I experienced, to see all the things that we have available. And there's so much here. I just want students to take advantage of it. I want you to get out of your comfort zone. I want you to want to do the best you can do and use everything that's here. People here care about you, even if you don't know it. Even if you don't know it, they want you to be successful. And it's talked about all the time. But you have to ask for it. You have to be present. You have to use the resources. Now, being a trailblazer is not something any of us would put on a vision board or write on our goals. However, I think everyone in this room can strive to be one. You have a roadmap for Mary Frances early in her life by being your best, having a joy for learning. You can be a trailblazer in any space that you occupy. So, I have a call to action for you all. My mother was a teacher. I never thought I was going to be a teacher, but I do like to give homework. <laughs> and if you see me on campus and you told me you were at this lecture, I'm going to ask you about the homework and did you get it done? And here's some things that you can do to be that Mary Frances early in your community, to be that quiet trailblazer that she exhibited throughout her education and career. If you are a student, take joy in learning. You are in a very special time. You won't get this again. So even when it's hard, find the joy. Explore all the opportunities. Maybe you might want to minor in something because you have an interest. Remember, you all have a long time to work. A lot of careers can happen in that time. So build your toolkit. Try different things that interest you where you have gifts and talents. Work to be excellent in all you do. Martin Luther King once said, whatever your life's work is, do it well. I want you to use the resources here as a student that meet your needs. That may mean joining a club. I would strongly recommend every student here get a mentor. And mentorship looks a lot of different ways. We obviously have a mentorship program at the University of Georgia. I've been a mentor since COVID, most semesters from 2020 to today. I still talk to my mentees. So if you're a black student and you haven't signed up, that's your homework. If you're a white student and you haven't signed up, that's your homework. If you're any student in this room, that is your homework because there's a bulldog nation of people, students, grads, that look like me, that look like Professor, Professor Walcott, Dean Spangler. They look like all of us, and they're waiting for you to ask for help. They're waiting to support you. They're waiting to build a relationship, but you got to come halfway. They've already made the first step. What will you do? If you graduated from the University of Georgia, and you haven't signed up to be a mentor, that's your homework. <laughs> if you're not connected to this university, and we've had some conversations with G at GAPS last night about how we're going to pull some alumni back, to reconnect with your school or college, your program, your other classmates. Find ways to give back to our students. These students today are doing some of the most amazing things. You should hear about it. Just like in 1961, Students need advice and wise counsel from people like you. Now, if you didn't go to UGA, guess what? You have homework too. <laughs> I want you to make time today when we go into this reception to talk to a student, introduce yourself, make a connection. See what they're doing, just ask simple questions. Get to know them a little bit. Help them get comfortable being uncomfortable. And if you can't do it here when you go back to your community, any student you encounter in their journey, take a little time with them. See what they're doing. See where their interests lie. Maybe you can be a resource. Maybe you can help them. We all have dreams. But in order to make dreams come into reality, it takes an awful lot of determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort. 
Jesse Owen. We know Mary Frances early and many that came after her trailblazed a way for us, people like me, to be here and to be at UGA. I hope those actions of Mary Frances early and of the trailblazers will fuel you to work harder. Find your passion. Look at ways to help others. What are you doing to help others? Think about that. History makes its mark every day. And as we all gather today to celebrate Mary Frances early, please know you still have a chance to be a quiet trailblazer. Thank you. Thank you. 
I'm going to try to make my remarks brief today. First, I want to ask you to help me to uh, thank Eva Daniels because she's done it. I don't have to talk about myself because she's done it. <laughs> getting older and we can't get out and do some of the things although we want to. And by the way, I'm, that moniker of the quiet trailblazer has accrued to me over the past few years and I want you to know that I'm not always quiet. <laughs> That's an admission of guilt because I try, I try very hard, but sometimes I can't be quiet. And the times when I can be quiet is when I see injustices done or things said that I'm not comfortable with. And you have to be able to handle it without being ugly, you know? Some of us can do that well and others of us can't. I hate hearing the uh, newscasters on the various uh, news programs yelling at each other. They get nothing resolved. If we only accept each other and say, we can agree to disagree, or let's see if we can work this out together. I, I lived a long and fruitful life, and I am so blessed, because the things that I have done or been able to accomplish were not just of my own doing. I had a strong foundation for my parents, my parents weren't able to go to college as I did, and as my brother did. They were sharecroppers on a farm. But they made certain that we had the resources to do it and challenged us to reach for the sky, to be the best that we can. We each have a potential, but we are the only ones who can realize it. You cannot sit back on your laurels, even when you have successes, and say, you know, I've arrived. You never arrived. You always have the responsibility to keep moving forward. But when you're 87 going on 88 like I am, <laughs> there comes a time when you have to sit back and say, go dogs, <laughs> <laughs> and go students, <laughs> reach your potential, because that's what life is about. Life is not about sitting back waiting or vegetating, as I call it, sitting on a, a rocking chair waiting to die. I'm going to stay in there and, and do what I can. I've always had the courage, as Yvette said, to move outside the box. Because most women, when I started my career, were not band directors. And uh, I remember taking my band, Cohen Middle School Band, to the segregated black music festival. And when we got there, I wanted to know how the judges, there were always three judges, and there were three black men. And they, I wanted to know how they felt my man was doing, because I had just been, this was our second year coming. And so uh, we got a superior rating. You either get superior, which is one, or good, which is um, two, on fair, which is three. Um, you shouldn't come. <laughs> we have a superior on the education sheet. One of the one of the judges wrote, "Very good for a female." either before or after. I went marching up to the church. <laughs> and I asked him, what did you mean by this? And he said, well, you know, we don't see very many female band directors. I said, do you realize that females study the same curriculum as do men? There's nothing different except in the gender. But we can do, we can do, I mean, we wouldn't be in the field if we couldn't do it. And he just smiled. He, he could have taken my, my, my uh, hour rating down, but he didn't. 
because I was not supposed to do that. So I'm not always quiet. <laughs> but I want to encourage all of you, especially students. Education to me, my parents told me, that it's the key to success. And they meant it. And it is. But you have to make that come true. You can't do it by staying in bed when you don't feel like getting up or staying out too late. You got to, you got to really grasp it. This is a wonderful university, and I hope you know that you are privileged to be here because they turned away many, many, many super students out here. But when I hear about, our, I'm not thinking just about the football team. When I hear that the, the college, I mean the university is number 13 in public universities over the nation, I, my, my chest, don't have much of a chest, but my chest. <laughs>
or the song that says, the more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. And so I hope that throughout this month, throughout this semester, as a community here at the University of Georgia, we find more reasons, more ways, more opportunities to come together as an institution and as a community. Hope you all have a good day. Go dogs, go students. Go dogs. <laughs> yes. Go dogs, go students, and reach your potential, as Ms. Erla said. Thanks for being here and have a good day.